audio in three, two, one, you're live. Welcome to the show, Dr. D. How are you this week? Ah, doing very well. Doing very well. Staying cool and uh, temperatures are cooling down here in Santa Barbara. I didn't feel like it to me when I walked in the door. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're you're living in denial, my friend, which is called air conditioning. I'm, well, that's it right there. That's it right there. <laughs> um, yeah, well, you look cool. You always look cool. Well, thank you very so. much. And, uh, listener, you can't see what I'm seeing here, but Dr. D's console is decorated in, I don't know, 50, 60 balloons here, Dr. D. I'm Something like I, that. I'm exaggerating. There's also turkeys in the studio. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's an old, old joke if you've been listening to the show. Um, what, the balloons, what are they for? Uh, we were celebrating our morning man, Mike. Mike in the morning and his 100th day. That's good. So you're going to keep him to 101? Uh, and beyond. Yeah. <laughs> 101 no, i just want to make beyond. sure that the balloons were like a going away after no 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 day. they're they're a coming of age and very proud of what he has accomplished and yeah. uh tell us about what he has accomplished and, and just real quickly if you wouldn't mind because i know he's new to the station of 100 days now well as but, far uh, as being relatively uh, new mike in the morning he is new yeah. he is uh, also the co-host of a program called community alert Positive preparation, not if, but when disaster strikes, Tuesdays at uh, 11 a.m. here on AM 1290. And uh, so he's been doing that show for a long time. And uh, he was very interested in coming in uh, and filling uh, filling the slot uh, from 7 to 9 here on AM 1290. So we did a little so training all, all and the news and all that every stuff, day. Everything. He yeah. just gets better. He just well, gets better. Well, welcome. Uh, Mike in the morning, Mike in the morning, Mike, Mike Williams. In the morning. Mike yeah. Williams. Well, I do. I do listen to him. if I'm up that early. <laughs> 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 all right. I want to, I want to take everybody to Chicago. Actually, we're going to take you around the world a little bit today within the United States. And uh, we're going to take you to Chicago with our special guest, Anya. She's a musician. She's a guitarist. She's a producer uh, and so much more. An artist, which is one of the first ways I came to know her. Uh, her album covers, if you go to Spotify or look up some of her album covers, she does some original art for the covers. And it is really pretty amazing, Dr. D. I'm a big fan of her art. Uh, Anya is in Chicago, I believe. We've also got Roxanne Seaman. She goes by Roxy to her friend. So uh, I call her Roxanne. <laughs> <laughs> she lets me call her Roxanne. No, I call her Roxy. And we've got Chris uh, Wilson. And he is in uh, Los Angeles, Chris. We're sick. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, Los Angeles. West Los Coast. Angeles. Uh, well, so, so two in LA, Roxy's in LA, and uh, one in Chicago, and two in Santa Barbara. This is pretty, we, we're all over the place. So let's get back to Anya. Anya is our special guest today. And uh, looking forward to this show a, a lot uh, because not only are we going to get to know Anya a little bit and we get to listen to her original music. We're going to listen to seven songs and premiere a new secret song that I don't believe is out anywhere uh, at the end of the show. And I'm going to tease you all through the show on that and, and stick around to hear that. You'll be the first to hear it. Anya is out in Chicago, as I've said a few times uh, uh, putting together a new album and working on some new tracks at, at the Roxanne and Chris are joining us because they have worked with Anya on, on a, a particular single. They're still working on it. And we're going to do something we've never done on any show before, which is tell you how to make a song. You're gonna, they're going to tell us how hmm. they make a song and we're going to take it through from beginning concept to writing the song, to laying down the tracks, the different musical instruments, uh, inspiration, uh, how Zoom plays into creating a song these days, all of this fun stuff. We're going to do it, take you step by step with sound. So stay tuned for that at the end of the show before we premiere her uh, on, on your uh, new single. So welcome, everybody. Anya, let me tell you a little bit about her. She plays... A lot of different genres. Um, you're going to hear her music. It rocks. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's plain and simple. It rocks. And it, what I really loved about every song that sh she chose for us for this show and we put into our music soundtrack is that 
there are layers. There are a lot of layers. There are a lot of melodies and harmonies and, and, and the song will switch up on you. Uh, and just when you think when you, when you can't get enough energy, it comes from another direction and blows you over with a, with a whole new uh, chord and guitar. And it just really, it, like I said, it rocks all of our music rocks. It's so good. So, so seasoned, <laughs> such a seasoned versatile musician, rock, metal, alternative, punk, fusion, lad and jazz and pop. But like I said, she mainly specializes in the rock genre. She's a singer, a songwriter, a producer, composer, and collaborator with other artists. Uh, she moved to Los Angeles when she was just 14. And I'm going to actually pick up the story here uh, because, Anya, I want to hear about before you got here. Let's go, let's go all the way back to Poland and you're 13, 12, 13, 10. What age did you decide that music was going to become your life? And how did your parents react to that? And welcome, uh, Anya. I mean, I think I was a little bit younger. You know, I was seven or eight years old. I would wake up in the morning and watch MTV. I would watch Britney Spears on the TV. And I think Avril Lavigne had a single that was very famous and popular. And um, But I think it started for me when I saw Heart perform. Mm. Barracuda. <laughs> Barracuda. Uh, did you see them perform live? Barracuda live, or was this on TV? On television? It was on TV. I don't even remember it, uh, what it was, but it was a segment of you know the Wilson sisters. Yeah. Well, this is show is about you, but because you brought up Avril Lavigne, I have to tell you a real quick story you might appreciate. I'm in London. I'm at the uh, uh, oh God, was it Saint Germain Hotel, something like that. I I, I get out of a cab. Uh, another cab pulls up a lorry, right? Is that what they call them? A lorry. Another cab lorry pulls up. Avril Lavigne jumps out at the same time I jump out. And this is when that, when she had that hit song skater boy, she gets out. I get out. I know who she is right away. We, we, we basically parallel walk into the hotel lobby together. The front desk clerk sees her. We get in the elevator together, her and I only, and I'm like, Oh my God, what am I going to say to her? If anything. And the hotel clerk changed the music. And put on skater boy so as we're going up the elevator we're looking at each other and we just both start cracking up that's my avril levine sorry <laughs> okay so you're back in poland and you're getting you know you're having influence television uh musicians mtv like all you uh, teenagers like i did as well and and then what, what what happens next how do you does it just the bug bite you the music bug uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, my family was never in music and nobody ever played any instruments. So everyone was like, uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> what did you tell them? What, um, you say, I'm going to be a rock star. Well, no, I just really wanted to play guitar, but my family thought it was like one of those trends where you do something for two months and then you quit. So that's right. why they were like, it's just the, it's just the phase. It's the phase. <laughs> now, how many phases it sounds like you had a little bit of history with phases. How many things did you love and abandon along the way before you became a full-fledged musician? Um, I mean, to be honest with you, music was one of those things that never abandoned me because I always sang, even if it was at church or anywhere, yeah. you know, at school. Um, but I think uh, there was a time where I wanted to be a dancer. Mm. So they knew that, and then you had <laughs> given that up? Yeah. <laughs> so they're like, no, nah, I don't know about that. Let's see about this music. Well, the, the dancing had to have played into becoming stage presence, rock star status, right? Uh, it helped you. Uh, in some ways, yeah. Feeling the rhythm and understanding yeah. grooves and just, you know, listening and knowing how to move to music is definitely uh, something that I think musicians should work on. So. Mm -hmm. What is the music scene like in Poland then and now? Can you describe that to us? What, how was, were you, was it a career that a lot of people thought about or talked about going into or it, it, music, the music business in general? Uh, no, it's, uh, it's a very small niche thing and it's very unexistent. I would say uh, when I was growing up in Poland, there wasn't really a music school I could go to. Oh. Um, for contemporary music, it was only classical, mm. and they didn't have the instruments I wanted to play. 
I could play flute or uh, violin or viola or cello, but no guitar. And if you wanted to play guitar, it was only classical guitar, but I, I felt like I didn't want to learn every Bach piece in the world. So I was kind of like, ah, uh, this is not the music that I really want to play. Yeah. And what did you do? Uh, were, did you have instruments? Did you have access to, to instruments at that age back in Poland? Uh, no, no, I did not. So what, uh, how did you, how did you get, get your fix, so to speak on with music, with playing an instrument learning a guitar? Uh, so it wasn't until I moved to America and it was kind of a rebellious move for me to get a guitar because, you know, when I moved here, I didn't like it here at first and I really wanted to move back. Um, so it was kind of a way to be like, mom, I'm going to do what I want. So I just kind of went to a pawn shop and I bought my own guitar for $30. And then I was so lucky because the time I bought a guitar, that's when you could learn everything on YouTube. So I just sat on YouTube for hours and I just oh, wow. learned off of YouTube by myself. That's pretty amazing. So you're self-taught via videos on YouTube on how to. That's interesting. Um, very interesting. I wonder how many musicians out there have done that, what you what you did. Uh, so now you're in, in the US, the United States and US and California at this point with your pawn shop $30 guitar. Uh, Chicago. Chicago but, and YouTube. Yeah, the second Poland. <laughs> So it's Anya, YouTube, and her guitar. Now tell me about the guitar a little bit. Be, what, a $30 guitar. Is that a good guitar? <laughs> I mean, surprisingly, it was a very good guitar, but it didn't look very cool because it had this um, guy in like a sombrero on the guitar. And it wasn't one of those, you know, <laughs> guitars you bring to a cool acoustic gig because everyone's always like, what's on your guitar? <laughs> It, it was a little tacky. No, you know what? I bet it was actually, they were, they were like, who is this girl? Did the, <laughs> by the way, did the, the guy on the guitar, did he look like anybody on the screen here uh, <laughs> with a cowboy hat on? <laughs> was it Richard? Actually, Dr. it, it kind of looks a little bit uh, like <laughs> Richard, you know, with the hat, because the person on the guitar had kind of a similar hat like you. So. <laughs> Dr. D, he's I famous on guitars. I pawn shop around. guitar D. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> pawn shop guitars. Okay, so now you're, you say, did you move over alone at 14? And did you, I mean, I'm um, sure you're not alone, but did you, did you leave? Did your parents send you over or how did that? Um, so I used to live with my uh, grandparents in mm. Poland and they kind of raised me while my mom was in America. And then okay. at some point my mom was like, you should come here and learn English. So that's what I did. <laughs> okay. Learn English and guitar. USC guitar music and music business. And you had a, you have a minor in uh, recording. You went to USC, you went to the famous USC music uh, school there. That's amazing. I, I went to the film school, which is right next door to you guys. And I, I think I told somebody else that was on that. I just remember coming out of class and hearing all of you guys play. It was one of my favorite memories of school there. Everybody practicing outside. Um, how was that experience at USC? Uh, I mean, it was crazy and fun and uh, very eye-opening to learn. In, in which ways? Uh, so many. Uh, I think you know, it was kind of like I got there and I, I just kind of kept exploring and following my path of what I wanted to learn. And, uh, you know, some doors open, some doors closed, but the ones that open, you know, I kept going through and more doors led to more doors. And, uh, you know, I kind of got what I needed out of the school, I think. Hmm. It's a great place to network, right? Where, I mean, some mm -hmm. of the best kids in music and entertainment, uh, kids of famous kids or parents and, and and the music business and the instructors M mentioned some of the instructors that that taught you that you might know or that are known in their own right if you wouldn't um, mind yeah so you know i studied with tim kobza and uh, steve trovato uh richard smith uh, wow. uh and then uh it's just everybody you know patrice russian is there and uh you know it could go yeah. for days <laughs> yeah and you get a lot of guest uh people that pop in right for classes oh, yeah and, so you know, many <laughs> i, I love that about it you never knew it was going to show up um 
you are you have influence you have particular influences that you really love in music um and talk to me about that i mean you really respect musicians and artists who have blazed trails on their own uh gone their own way and it's worked out for them and not made any apologies can you explain a little bit about that that's who you are isn't it uh yeah i guess they're just independent thinkers Mm -hmm. Uh, or they they just kind of uh don't uh succumb to the general society they just kind of do their thing their way and they've always been a little rebellious in that sense where they uh, don't do the most obvious thing the general population does and you know that being Nine Inch Nails and Radiohead mm-hmm. and The Doors, uh, you know L7, St. Vincent, uh, Tool, uh, you know a lot of System of a Down. <laughs> does the, the music that you listen to and the music that you play, and we're going to play that for, uh, I, I want everybody to, before we get to our commercial breaks where we hear Anya's music, put on your headphones if you're, even if you're in the car, find some. <laughs> plug them into something listen to the music with some headphones it is really good but it's it's driving i mean you've got these driving um just anthemish just hard rocking you know good good uh, tunes uh, that you that you, uh, you're really talented on the guitar but it, you cannot help but just feel like energy is coming out of you and that you are uh it's just good music to like get it all out and, and, and feel good. I think, uh, and a lot of the bands that you've just mentioned have that, some of that style to their, that, you know, the, the heavy guitars and the, the driving beats and, and the lyrics that are, uh, you know, they're exploring their pain or their, their growth. Uh, and, and you can feel it. And especially at certain ages or certain times in your life, I think your music has a has a lot of that. I mean, I connected with a lot of the stuff, and I felt the energy. Um, talk about Trent Trent Reznor. Uh, how has he inspired you? How has he influenced you? And, and what do you like about him and Nine Inch Nails? Um, you know, I I just love um, you know kind of his self exploration and mm-hmm. some of his uh, truth to you know how he feels and just kind of doing music that he likes and you know, that was a little bit darker. I really liked that he just figured out how to record and uh, he was, you know, the innovator of using Pro Tools and self-recording and, you know, a lot of the records he did, he was just like, well, I don't like the fact that the, you know, the label is trying to take all of my, oh, wow, it's raining. Um, I heard it. I thought thought you were sitting under a waterfall. (laughs) Yeah. Wow, it's raining. Um, You know, I just really like that. Update a weather report. (laughs) (laughs) Still sunny down there in uh, on on one pico, Roxy. (laughs) Sunny and sunny in Santa Monica. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, I cut you off. Uh, Oh no, it's uh, yeah. So you know, I mean, I just think it was very clever that he ended up doing what he thought was, you know followed his passion his vision and uh, he would just tell labels like no i'm gonna do this my way <laughs> so a lot of your topics you you connect with him a lot i, I can see and uh, right and and these musicians uh, you've mentioned iron maiden the radiohead um jim morrison they uh, a lot of the stuff is dark are you dark is your i mean do you go through dark periods where the music you know, you have to have this music, you have to get it out this way in your life. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, but I think everybody has that to some degree. I, it's a very therapeutic way of going about, you know. Uh, yeah. Therapy almost for yourself, right? <laughs> Self-soothing and, and uh, therapy. Okay, we've got to take a break. So, which if you're a listener right now, uh, you get you get to hear Anya. So you, the wait, it's worth the wait. I I, I promise you. Um, we're gonna take you. Let me see if I've got your song list here. I think I've got it handy, and I want to tell you what you're gonna listen to right now. Oh, what a great title, Hollywood Moon by Anya. We'll be right back. I love that song. You've got great titles still. Oh, great titles. Um, 
Okay, cool. So the set, we're going into our second segment. And we're going to come back here with, you guys can't hear it, obviously, but uh, it's dropped in the sound bed. So when we get you then Richard gets you the master, final master. It's going to sound beautiful. Oh, there's a final master? Isn't there a fi and by the way, Anya, I played actually some long versions of your song. And like, I think there's two minutes in Hollywood Moon and Chicken Pick was so much fun. I wanted to play almost the whole song in different pieces, but we didn't have enough song spots. But I did play. And we are playing, uh, Dr. D's playing long versions. What are we coming back with? We're Just, coming back with Chicken Pick. Got it, got it. I got to know then why, what, I got to know the title behind that, or the meaning behind that title. <laughs> Can I go close uh, the door really quick? Yeah, sure. Here, go for it. That rain sounded nice. Oh, yeah. Did it? Did it? <laughs> I love the rain. Why doesn't it rain around here? No kid, jeez. Oh, uh, Chris, man, I love some of your your uh, publicity photos. <laughs> I got to get to know you a little bit better and your T-shirt. <laughs> happy pentagram. Yeah. <laughs> pentagram. I like that. That's awesome. Happy pentagram. We gotta... I like it. All right, here we go. In three, two, one, you're live. Welcome back to the show. We are with Anya this entire hour. That was Anya's song called Chicken Pick. What a great title. Anya, give me a give me a short behind the scenes on what chicken, how you named chicken pick and what that meant to you. Uh, I met this uh, guitar uh, pick company at NAMM called Chicken Picks, and okay. I love them, and they sponsor me, and I just wanted to oh. write a song and thank them for all the free picks they've given me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. See, now we got to name drop, and hopefully they'll send you another check or a bunch of picks. <laughs> <laughs> some new guitar strings or something okay so when we left we were talking a little bit we're, we're just getting into the good stuff with you and getting to know Anya a little bit better Anya what do you want your fans and listeners to know about you what do you want people to know about you I guess I want people to know that uh you know I wasn't just the singer of these songs I also composed and I produced them and I learned studio stuff and how to mic instruments and I, I in the end I just want people to you know listen to my music and be like wow this is possible you know you can mm -hmm. learn everything and do everything by yourself and uh you know if you really want to get something done um you could do it you know sometimes we look on the other side and we're like wow that is so far away like the goal but if you take every step every day you're a step closer you know it's like yeah it might seem like a very 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 rough tall hill but if you do every step every day you know you're closer and eventually you're there are there days where you say well you take those steps through the tall grass up that hard rough hill are there days that you go these are this is a harder step than that step yeah and do I mean, you ever ever think of giving up is that even cross your mind do you say that uh, the, the, you know what I mean? It's such a hard hill, the, the business you're in, but you're doing it, as you said. And that's your message. Exactly. I mean, you know, there's days where you fall off the stairs and then you have to like go five steps down. And Twist an like, ankle. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, you love the studio. I mean, you love to spend time in the studio. Uh, explain to, to us. What that's like. I love the studio too, even this little one, Dr. D, with the mm -hmm. balloons and everything. <laughs> uh, what, what is that like for you, though? What's that experience? And do me a favor, Anya, if you could um, explain it to us, to the listener, with descriptions, if you could. Like, you know, what does a studio smell like? You know, a recording studio. I mean, you got these big consoles and these musical instruments, and people have great rock stars have lived there and, and create great music and people live in those things. What's it like? What's the, what's the whole ambiance? What's described to us what you love about it in all ways. I mean, it's kind of like a cave. It's just, mm. it's very, safe? Is it yeah, safe? It's, safe. Um, it's a way to just kind of go somewhere and uh, step away from your daily life. And, uh, 
it's just somewhere to be creative, I think. I mean, usually they're very cold and very dark and you can't tell what time it is. So sometimes it's 2 a.m. but it feels like it's 4 p.m. and you're like, I, I don't, you know, but it just helps like you. Like Vegas? Yeah. <laughs> Casino? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that helps. That helps your creativity? Yeah. I think the fact that you're surrounded by such creative people and uh, I, I mean, it's just, you know, uh, it's just really a cave of uh, creativity for me. And and typically the role um, of the woman in music and in the studio and the music business, correct me if I'm wrong, but most of the women that get the spotlight or the glory are the vocalists, I would imagine from from my what I what I see, is that true? And and how is it changing in the music business for women, in the studio, uh, in the business in general? Uh, I mean, now women are uh, doing more uh, different jobs. You know, there's more female engineers and producers, and uh, you know, a lot of women are uh, stepping up and doing different kinds of jobs. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to, I, I want to get into that a little bit more, and then we're going to start moving towards taking a part and how to make a song. You're going to take us through that with Roxanne Seaman and uh, Chris. Um, we're going to say, and, and I can't wait for that. That's going to be so much fun, but we're, we're getting closer. But when we come back, I want to, I want to talk a little bit more about your experience as a woman in the music business. We'll be right back. We are spending the hour with Anya. Roxanne Seaman and Chris Wurzig, and we are going to take you out with doors closed. Although they all seem to be opening for you, Anya. We'll be right back. Okay, you're clear. Cool. Very good. Okay, so let's see. What do we got? We got one more 10, a five or something, then overtime, Richard. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I got enough time for the song here. Okay. <clears throat> well, I thought the next segment would be the breakdown of the song because uh, that was segment three, as you had yeah, talked about. I know, I... And then segment four, obviously, would be the closeout. But we've got two segments to go. Okay. Yeah, there's so much we want to talk about here. Um, two seg Okay. And some overtime, right? We basically have 20 minutes left. Okay. Yeah. So let's do this. I'm going to come back. I'm going to go real quickly through the women thing in the studio. Then you guys are going to talk a little bit, Dr. D and on, you're going to talk a little bit about the studio and the consoles and some of that cool stuff behind the scenes stuff, the analog and digital yeah. and all those things you like. And Chris jump in if you like, <laughs> and uh, okay, we'll do that. And then we'll go into the song, the last two segments in overtime. We'll get right into that. All right, here we go. So I'm just going to ask one question then I'm going to pass it to you, Dr. DK. Okay. We talked about. Okay. Sure. Three. All right. Two, one, you're live. Welcome back to the Jeremiah Show. We are here with Anya. She's our musical guest. All the music you hear on the show is Anya's. And we just came back in with Runaway. Anya, we were talking before the break. Welcome back, by the way, in Chicago, in the rain. Uh, sounds very dark and uh, kind of romantic in a way, in the music business, right? In the studio, in the rain, in Chicago, making music. Um, what is it like for a, for a woman in the studio these days? Is it is it more and more open? You know, becoming more open for your perspective from your perspective, or you do you just blaze trails and and do it all, and you don't ask any questions about how it used to be? Uh, I mean, you know, it's definitely a tricky topic because it really depends who you work with and. Uh, who you're surrounded with, but I think uh, it's changing, it's getting better, but it really depends on who you work with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to break the stereotype you've said of the misconception that women can't do everything. I think exactly. I've, I've quoted you right. Yeah, yeah uh, I would love to break the stereotypes that, uh, you know, women can also produce and can write and can uh, play guitar and could, you know, play drums and rock out and love it yeah and you're doing it by example which is the very very best way talk to me about the project that you're involved in gritty in pink what uh, is that yeah. so it's like a, a 
female musician uh, community that supports each other in uh, Los Angeles. And we do uh, mo monthly jams and, you know, we come out and we play and everybody's uh, a very successful uh, girl in the music industry. And uh, they're all kind of older and, uh, you know, I look up to them. I love them dearly and I want to give them a shout out. So, yeah, it's great. We're going to give out all their information on the commercial break too. So you can find them. Um, you'd like to include more social justice topics in your music. And what does that mean? Um, yeah, so with my music, you know, I always wanted to uh, figure out a way to uh, recreate kind of a system of a down mm -hmm. or uh, Rage Against the Machines kind of band uh, topics because I just find that very important. I always liked that how music and politics kind of meshed and uh, you know, I really like punk rock and the whole movement. I think that they just did a neat job fighting for what's very important in the world. And now it seems that a lot of popular music doesn't really talk about that. And you like to bring that into your music? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's important. You know, I think it's important to want to change the world and make it a better place. And I also uh, like your thought about art. You know, your uh, you, you see a lack of activism and artwork. And you are an artist as well in many ways. You want to talk about that a little bit? What did you, how do you plan on adding art to or activism, activism through art? Uh, I mean, you know, I'm figuring that out um, every day. But uh, for example, I, I think I mentioned I did a video for Poison. And, you know, in that video, I fight uh, Donald Trump. <laughs> so, you know to yeah. just like well uh i don't know who won by the way I, I, <laughs> you did of course but you know it's kind of like uh i guess i want to shock people and just have them you know pause and think about what's going on because i think everybody is so stuck in their own world and we forget that we all have an impact on you know what we say and how we think and yeah. uh, that we can come together and uh create something well, speaking of creation and creating things and then being in the studio, there is nobody better, I don't think, in my, uh, within three feet of me, that, that can talk to you, <laughs> talk about and talk to you. Chris is there, but and Roxy's there, but they're a little further away, about 100 miles. We got Dr. D right across the, the glass here, the plexiglass. You uh, wanted to ask you a couple of questions about the studio because you are a fan of things that are old, too, in, in the recording business. So, Dr. D, take it away. Sure. First of all, I wanted to comment on your uh, uh, view of the studio. I love being in the studio as well. And I've had it happen as well, where I'm working on the computer editing and having having a blast, whether I'm having challenges, trying to get things to work the way I want or not, doesn't matter. The fact is there's that level of creativity. And it's like the next thing you know, you look up and it's like, it's five hours later. Holy mackerel. And then when you go back to listen to it, and I've really worked hard, I don't know about you, but I've really worked hard on maintaining my humility that I wouldn't be where I am if it weren't for the thousands, literally thousands of people who have contributed to the work that I do. And so when I go and listen to something, uh, it, sometimes it'll bring a tear to my eye and I'll sit there and I'll go, wow. That really sounds good. Not, oh, look what I've done. But it's like, th that's amazing. I can't believe it sounds the way that it does. And I'm, I'm, I'm sort of impressed with myself. But again, from a very humble perspective. You pat you on the back over there. <laughs> <laughs> what about you and your creating in the studio uh, in, in that respect? I mean, the ideas come for the songs. You've got ideas as far as the instrumentation. I'm sure you have ideas in terms of the way it's then mixed in the console on the console uh, with different effects or EQ and so on and so forth. And when it's all said and done, do you ever sit, are you able to sit there and listen and just sort of be in awe of the talent that you have? Again, from that humble perspective of if it weren't for the thousands of people who have helped me get where I am this wouldn't sound as good as it does. Um, yeah, I mean, I, for me, when I hear a song through a console or through big speakers, it just kind of 
there's this uh, feeling of just being on top of the world and it feels very good because it's your creation and your idea and your vision. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, for me, you know, uh, I guess I'm a bit of a hard ass and I always find something uh, wrong with the track or <laughs> like, oh, I could EQ this or I could do that. But, you know, I try to kind of step back and be like, well, it's okay for it not to be perfect. <laughs> so I'm always kind of fighting with this like, well, uh, you know, I, I guess I have a very high bar for myself regarding uh, my music. So. Well, I know I struggle. I used to struggle with that that aspect of perfectionism, uh, but I did take that perspective that you just described, saying, "Look, I could spend the next twelve hours tweaking this thing, and no one will ever hear it because I'll find something else and something else and something else." And so finally, I get to a point where I say, "I got to let it go. I got to let it be what it's going to be." And of course, even in that process, and I'm sure you've experienced this, the techniques that you use to perfect that thing that you keep hearing things about, then the next production that comes along, okay, I'm going to use that from the last one. And it seems to make things go even faster and, and you get a little bit more efficient. Not that, not that creating music is supposed to be an efficient process, but you see, do you, do you get what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I've noticed that every song gives me a different problem in a funny way where like you just have to like solve a new issue with, you know, every song has like a little something that's where you're like, okay, I'm stuck. <laughs> hmm. That is a perfect segue. Do you have a follow up, Dr. D? The only follow up I have for you is this. A buddy of mine many years ago when CDs were just starting to come out and they were pressing music into CDs and releasing them. What's a CD? Yeah, exactly. He said, I will never buy a CD because it doesn't sound the same, does not have the same ambiance, if you will, as a vinyl record. And I, I, I don't know whether he never bought one or not. All I know is, yes, I can hear the difference. When you're recording your music, do you use digital and or analog? Which is, is do you have a preference or are you kind of using both in some fashion? Uh, so I'm a true believer and supporter of, you know, analog gear. And I think part of it is because I uh, took console classes and I just learned so much about the SSL <laughs> console and all my favorite producers, you know, they, they're they just really into the raw recordings and they just record live amps. I love the sound of live drums going through like a very, you know, good preamps and uh, compressors. And then uh, it, it the sound is just different and it's thick, but I definitely, you know, use like synthesizers and I guess that's more digital. I use some VST synthesizers and Pro Tools. I try to kind of mix the two, but I love the just recording raw instruments. Mm. Well, as far as Pro Tools is concerned, I've seen it. I think I've worked with it once. Uh, everybody has been asking me over the last well, since 1994, when I started working with a program called Cool Edit 1.5.3, and when I read a trade magazine where I saw the BBC and I saw all the screenshots of Cool then Cool Edit, I said, "Look, if it's good enough for BBC, it's good enough for me. I haven't I haven't left what is now, of course, Adobe. Uh, you know, and everybody's got to find." what works for them best. And so if Pro Tools is your is your uh, go-to, then go to it and uh, thank you. Yeah, we, we will take a break, but Chris, what do you like? What do you use? Or, or do you use a lot of different programs? I'm, um, my main program is Cubase. Cubase. Which is kind of similar. Others have Logic. It's, yeah, I, I grew up with Cubase since the mid nineties. So yeah, so I'm, it's like I'm what Dr. D says. It. Totally. Yeah, it was what you, what you like. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this is fascinating, and it's about to get a whole lot better because we are going to tell you, we're going to go through with some of the best people in the music business, Roxanne Seaman and Chris Orsig. They're going to, along with Anya, break down one of her songs, her new song, which is not released yet, but you're going to hear how it's created layer by layer when we come back. We're going to take you to break with that, uh, that fight between Anya and Donald Trump in Poison. <laughs> All right, you're clear. Oh, boy. At least you didn't cut off his head like what's her, Kathy Griffith. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, we've got, we got, a, we've got 11, we've basically got 13 minutes. Can we do this, you guys? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Roxy, Chris, we, we in this? We can make it happen? 
Okay, I'll set you up. All right, I, I do want to read their bios, so that's going to take a minute. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah. All righty then. Roxy's gone, so I'll start with Chris. Oh, there I'm she back. is. I'm back. I just wanted to close the window. Oh, is it raining down there now, too? No, but there's a truck outside. <laughs> Army trucks truck in outside. Santa Monica, huh? <laughs> we'll let Anya go fight the truck. All right, Richard. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> in three, two, one, you're live. How to make a song? You're about to find out. We have the two of the very best in the music business here with us today. I'm going to start with Chris Wersig, who is in Los Angeles. He's an award-winning composer, a songwriter, and a producer. He enjoyed classical training on a piano and a saxophone. He studied audio engineering at SAE Technology College and has more than 20 years' experience in music production. More than that, he can be heard in games like the acclaimed Top 10 iPad game Alien Tribe 2, Dr. D's favorite, the multiple <laughs> award-winning short movies, Intervention, 20 Matches, Cat Do uh, in Cozy. I'm tr trashing that for you. I'm so sorry, uh, Chris. Trick of the Old Cat, the comedy feature 39 and a half, and in numerous TV shows on ABC, E! Channel, MTV, Fox Sports. Audio audience network direct TV and others current and upcoming projects include music for the pilot for a tech horror web series. Scary. Ooh, scary. Ooh. An LGBTQ plus animated comedy series and a charity project with an orchestral cover version of Depeche Mode's People Are People. I can't, that sounds great. Project with 36 musicians and singers. I wish we had time to talk about that. Chris Worsig is on the show today. We've also got Roxanne Seaman, our friend Roxy. I think uh, during the break, she told me I could call her Roxy. I guess I got it in the friend circle. Um, <laughs> uh, but I do want to mention before we go to Roxy, I wanted to, I love this tagline uh, from uh, Chris says, Worsig takes the soul of sound and uses it as a weapon. I don't know if you quoted that or somebody quoted that for you, Chris. That's good. It's from a, it's from a magazine. It's my oh, favorite quote. I, I, I love it. I love it. We got to make some t-shirts with that on it. I'll wear them. All right. Back to Roxy. Roxanne Seaman. Here's who she is, if you don't already know. And if you don't, where have you been? Roxanne Seaman, or has her friends call her, like I said, Roxy is an international songwriter with recordings by Billy Hughes, Philip Bailey, Phil Collins, Pat Midler. Barbara Streisand, Earth, Wind, and Fire, The Jacksons, The Sisters of Mercy, Shaka Khan, David Sanborn. I love David Sanborn. The Stanley Clark Band, Sarah Brightman, Sean Colvin, Chet Baker, mm. Dee Dee Bridgewater, Alejandra Guzman, Richard. Oh, I'm going to mess up his last name. How do you say that, Roxy? Koshitanti? Koshitanti. Anyway, super vocal in China's number one pop icon, icon, Jackie Chung, among others. She has written main title, in credit, on camera, feature, and source songs with film and TV, including Stuart Little 2, Spike Lee's Get on the Bus, Bruce Weber's Academy-nominated Chet Baker documentary, Let's Get Lost. The greatest, greatest ears in town. Many, many more foreign box office, box office hits in France, mainland China, and Hong Kong. Roxy is a two-time Emmy nominee. Welcome, both of you, to join us. Now we're going to break down a song, and uh, you're going to tell us how to make a song. And we're going, to, we're going to do that with what, Roxy? We're going to do that with a song that Anya, maybe her next single. Tell, tell us a little bit about how this, how this goes. Anya was, was over here. She was uh, at my place. She was recording her vocals for reality. And we were talking, and she was interested in getting into film. And I thought, because I had been working with Chris Worsig, who was into darker and harsher music, uh, during the pandemic, we were writing together. We were writing over Zoom, and it was working out really beautifully. So I thought it would be a great collaboration for the three of us to get together and, and write, which I suggested. And we set up a Zoom session. So our first session was on Zoom. Yeah, that's where I met Anya first. Okay. And... Um, it's like we, we were riding together uh, through Zoom already, as, as Roxy said. So um, we got together, we talked about concepts or, or ideas. I often start with a, with a basic track, say uh, drums and a bass, or maybe piano harmonies, some chords. 
often call it track one or, or like something like that because we might not have a title yet. And I, I think we have that. Do you tell me when you want us to play these and Richard will play them to show what you're give you an example. Uh, yeah, I've, it, it started out with a drum track that I already had produced a while ago, like a, a full drum set. And uh, I, I looped that, sent that back to to Anya and and Roxy, who were at their place in the studio. So that's that was the start for the song, that drum track. Okay, so we want to play it. Chris, take it from there. I think it's Anya who can take oh, is it, it from Anya? there. She started <laughs> recording. <laughs> okay, so Anya comes up next. Anya, what did you do with that? Um, I just kind of came up with a guitar riff that became kind of the skeleton of the song. And then uh, I recorded that because I was at Roxy's house with her. So we were on one side of the Zoom together. Um, we recorded on her iPhone and we sent it over to Chris. And then, uh, you know, while we were all on Zoom, we were just kind of talking about the idea of moment of truth and conceptualizing lyrics and kind of throwing in ideas of what it means to me and uh, Chris and Roxy and kind of what we want to write about for the song. So we want to play that, uh, the guitar edition now with the drums. <laughs> next this is cool it's coming together uh so you know our session ended uh i ended up kind of re-recording the guitar part and i wrote some more lyrics um i did like a guitar vocal and then i sent it over to chris and then yeah and uh, i took that uh, the recorded guitar the newly recorded vocals and made it into a fuller arrangement added some like synths and other sounds a bass and all that doubled the guitar so it got fuller and that was our demo version that we then went on to to record again yeah so we're, so we're gonna hear or do we go to the next version Is that
next? What happens? This is getting, this is, this is turning into a song. I could take that one actually and listen to it. <laughs> um, so actually that whole uh, take happened after we all met together um, in person at 11 a.m. on a Sunday. So uh, we were time crunched because I had to go to the airport at 3.15. Wow. So in the four hours we were together, um, you know, nope. we recorded more vocals and more guitar parts. Uh, yeah. So, so there's no pressure. Hurry up and make a hit. <laughs> Jump on a plane. Okay. Exactly. But we did, you know, 10 more guitar tracks. And, you know, on the day I officially met Chris in person, he was wearing a Nine Inch Nails shirt. Oh. So like, oh. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, and then uh, Roxy, if you want to say more about Sunday. Well, I would just have said what you already said. That 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 take was after the writing session in person because the chorus that you were hearing, where she's singing "Running Ragged," hadn't "Running Ragged" hadn't happened yet. That line was "Moment of Truth," and so she and so was singing "Moment of Truth," and while she was singing that. And I was, especially when we got to the tag, I, I heard in that same, with, you know, against that same melody for the hook, Running Me Ragged. And so Running Me Ragged actually over, uh, took over where Moment of Truth was. Okay. Wow. So then you're helping her with the lyrics and as a lyricist, as a songwriter, doing what you do, you hear, you just hear these the things it, in the hook. Yeah. The, the melody came with it. Are, and are we finished? Is that are we, <laughs> there's more? So it's happening there. So that's the part where we still need to write a second verse, uh, record some more backing vocals, add the chorus. We still have lots of chorus takes uh, that I can choose the best ones from for the for the next choruses. And then it gets mixed, mastered, and finally we'll have a, a finished song. So when will we have this finished song? When will we be able to? Uh, you'll come back, yeah? All you guys and, and play it for us or let us play it? If you let us, <laughs> of course, we got it. So it's a cliffhanger to hear how that song ends. Well, guess what? I, I really apologize. We're going to have to go. It is uh, our hour is up. And uh, unfortunately, but we've had been able to share some great music with Anya, Roxy and Chris. Uh, and I want to give you out some information um, right now real quick, how you can get a hold of them. So you can go to for Roxanne Seaman. You can go to Noah and Noah Music. It's at noah noah music.com spelled n-o-a n-o-a music.com uh and then on there you can find all of her her different uh social media handles because i'm short on time i'll just give you her website and you guys can do some of the work uh chris worsig go to chris worsig.com that's spelled c-h-r-i-s all one word w-i-r-s-i-g.com uh, have it handy here. So I'm just going to give out Chris's sorry, Roxy on Instagram, Chris Wurzig on Facebook, Facebook, Chris Wurzig music on your social media, go to Instagram and go to Anya cakes. That's with two S's. It's a N I A C A K E S S Facebook. Same thing. Anya cakes, Twitter, Anya cakes. It's easy. You can find her very, very easy. Spotify, 
uh, and original music on YouTube. Check it all out. She's played everywhere from the Viper Room Los, uh, in Los Angeles, the Satellite, the Carson Soundstage, the Standing Room, Hermosa Beach, the Beat Kitchen in Chicago. Check her out at one of these places. Go to her Facebook and Instagram and see where you can see her live next. Um, the next show, next show coming up, we've got the Sports Lounge with Lewis Jones. Lewis's special guest today are American Ninja Warriors, the top five women, Abby Clark and Casey Rothschild. And next week we have musician legend Ron Sexsmith. And we also have season 20 of The Voice on NBC. We have the winner, Cam Anthony, will be joining us. And if you're in New York City this week, and go see our good friend Johnny Valente, who owns Birdland Jazz Club, New York City. He's got a, uh, a rare uh, New York City appearance by trombonist Delfio Marsalis. Uh, he blends a, his Darf, uh, Delfio Marsalis quintet blends a funky New Orleans style with contemporary jazz twist that keeps those tapping and fingers snapping, Dr. D, from brass band to the bird to Mingus and more. And uh, that's Friday, July 16th at 9.30 p.m. Check out Gritty and Pink on grittyandpink.com on Instagram at Gritty and Pink. And thank you, Anya. Thank you, Roxy. Thank you, Chris. You guys learned how to make a song today. So get a hold of these guys if you want to do it the right way. And uh, enjoy reality world premiere right now from Anya. <laughs> 